Okay, we have another really interesting integral here today. We have integral of one over x to the six plus one dx. Let's get started with this. What I wanna do is let's factor this denominator and see what that does for us if we can. So the thing I wanna notice is this is actually, we could write this as the sum of two cubes. Let's just, let's take our x to the sixth and write it as x squared cubed plus one, but we can write one as one cubed. And what that's going to allow us to do is use our sum of two cubes formula here, where x squared is going to be our a value and 1 is going to be our b. So we can just follow this format and write this as x squared plus 1 times x, x squared squared is going to be x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1. And just like that, we have a way to factor our denominator, so let's just rewrite the integral in that form. And then from here, notice we have this product of polynomial terms. We could actually do partial fractions now. I'm going to try to avoid that. What's going to happen if this, this is a fourth degree term? I think the partial fraction is going to be a little messy. So let's try something else. What I like to do in these cases, it happens a lot when you have a one in the numerator. We really want something up there so we can try to get cancellation, maybe a u substitution. So we need to create something. What I can do is I can make an x squared plus one happen just by adding an x squared plus one, and we know we'll have cancellation here, but can't change the integral, so let's also subtract off that x squared. Okay, so now I've just split this up into two integrals. Okay, so we have our x squared plus one, we're doing that so we get a cancellation there. On this right integral, I actually put this back into the form of x to the six plus one. I think that's gonna work for us better, but notice I didn't change anything, but this is just x to the six plus one. We're just undoing the factoring that we just did. So then here on the left, we'll have this cancellation. So this integral is just going to be dx over x to the fourth minus x squared plus one. Okay, so from here, what I really want to do is I'm just going to focus on this integral on the left here for the moment. And we're in a similar predicament, right, where we'd like to have something in the numerator and we don't have that. So we need to kind of create something to make this work. What I can do here is let's rewrite this. Same kind of thing I want to create an x squared plus one to help me out, but I can't change it. So I'm gonna do is we're gonna subtract an x squared minus one. And that's almost okay, but if you distribute this minus, we end up with a two in the numerator. We can't have that. So if we multiply up front by a half, a half times this whole numerator is just gonna be one. Then next, we're just gonna split up this into two integrals. So we'll rewrite this again. Okay, and then with this broken up, there's a trick I've done a few videos like this where we're going to use this same trick on both these integrals where we can multiply numerator and denominator by 1 over x squared. And we'll do it here and here. So what I'm going to do is just multiply. We'll just have to distribute all this in and then let's see what we're left with. Okay, so we notice when I, dis when I distributed in my 1 over x squared, we get the same, it's the same denominator. So we, in both cases, we have x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x squared. And then the only difference in our numerators is this we have a positive sign here and a minus sign. And then what we need to do is we just need to factor these denominators in a way that's gonna help us out. So what I'm gonna do here for this first one is let's write this denominator as x minus one over x squared. So noticing that when we, if you square that out, you get x squared plus one over x squared. And then from the middle terms, we're gonna get a minus two. Well, we have a minus one there. So what I'm gonna do is just add a plus one and then we haven't changed it. Then for our second integral, just a little bit different, I'm gonna write this one as x plus one over x squared. Noticing that's gonna be x squared plus one over x squared, so we get those terms. Then the middle term is gonna get a plus two. We have a minus one there, so we need to do a minus three there in order to not change it. From here, why do we do all that? Well, we're set up in a pretty good place for a u substitution. What if I call, let's make this my u for this first one. So u is gonna be x minus one over x. Then if we differentiate this, our du, derivative of x is one, derivative of, and think of this as x to the negative one. So the derivative of this part with the minus sign is gonna be plus one over x squared dx, and that's exactly what we have here in the numerator. Then something really similar is happening over here. We're gonna make this our t. So t is going to be x plus 1 over x, and then our dt is going to be 1 minus 1 over x squared, because we have the minus from the power, but we have a plus sign there. 
dx. And that's exactly what we have in the numerator here. So now we'll make this substitution. We're gonna have half du again in the numerator, u squared plus one. So that one's nice for arctan. And then here we'll have minus one half uh, dt in the numerator, t squared minus three. But what I can do with this minus three, let's just write this as square root of three squared. And what that's going to let me to do is use this formula we have over here for hyperbolic inverse tangent. And so let's just integrate this. So our first piece, we have a half, and this is just arctan. Okay, so we'll just have our arctan of u minus one half. And then we'll use our formula for this one. It's gonna be minus one over our a, which is square root of three, tanch inverse uh, t over square root of three. Then let's just clean this up a little bit. So we're gonna have half tan inverse. Our u value is x minus one over x. I'm gonna rewrite, I'm just gonna get a common denominator and write this as x squared minus one over x. And then we're gonna have, here we're gonna multiply these two together. We're gonna have a plus one over two square root of three, um, hyperbolic inverse tangent. For our t, again, we get a common denominator. We'll write this as x squared plus one over x, just multiplying here by x over x. So then here we're gonna have x squared plus one over x, and we have a square root of three. And so this is gonna be our red piece. Okay, this is gonna be up here. So we just have to finish it off with this last part. Okay, so now we'll deal with this integral, which I said is gonna be quite a bit easier. So this should go okay. So we're just integrating x squared over x to the six plus one dx. And what I wanna do here, we can really do, this is great that we have something here. So this is gonna help us do a u substitution. To get to x squared, we're gonna want something x cubed. So we can actually write this, we can write our denominator as x cubed squared, notice that's x to the six plus one, x squared dx. And then if we make a u substitution, where our u is x cubed, then our du is gonna be three x squared dx. We can make that exactly, we can turn our denominator into that by multiplying by three and dividing by three here. So then rewriting this, we're gonna have one third integral du over u squared plus one. Again, same arctan formula we used earlier, so it's gonna be one third arctan tan inverse of u. We'll just plug in our x. And so that's actually gonna be that part of our answer. So we're gonna put it there, but we have a minus sign, so we're just gonna subtract one third tan inverse x cubed, and we're done. Kind of a long answer, right, for such a short problem. Anyway, we'll stop it there. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.